So today we're gonna take a look at the Marvy Lip Pen Fine Brush Alcohol Markers. Actually, I don't think there is any lip pen. There's Le Plume, Marvy Le Plume Fine Brush Markers. I have done other videos on these, so please check out my channel for those. Um, it's not necessary uh, for this video, but it would help. I am doing the field test today on some line art I rendered a few weeks ago. Haven't really had a chance uh, between now and then to get back to it. So, you know, it's kind of like we're going in fresh today. And these are fine tipped, uh, blur 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 yeah there yeah there we go i was looking for color a fine tip alcohol marker a much finer tip in fact than other alcohol markers that are currently on the market except for bullet nibs see that's a copic and that's a brush nib and i'll pull in so you guys can see unfortunately i no longer have any of my regular la plume markers um, so if you're interested in a review for those, one of the ways you can make that happen is by checking out my Patreon. Um, other than that, we're, we're just going to have to be satisfied with testing how these fine brush markers uh, handle. And these do not have the nylon brush or the nylon foam brush. <sighs> Dang it, I'm just all over myself today. These don't have the foam brush <laughs> that, um, that most alcohol markers have. They have a fiber brush rather like the Faber-Castell pit pens. So we're going to need to be very delicate in how we handle these. And I bought a set of 36 off of, yeah, is it 36 or is it 38? Uh, 36, yeah. 36 off of Dick Blick, that's the largest set they have. Um, and they're only, these particular markers are only available in 36 colors. The regular La Plumes are available in 144 colors. I bought my set off of Jerry's Artorama for about $50 and it was back ordered for a little while so it took a few weeks for it to come in um, and I purchased these as a um, to go with my alcohol markers rather than as a replacement for because they have the fine tips I thought it might be handy for smaller illustrations or finer details for this field test however I'm just going to use them on their own and then hopefully begin working them into my uh, alcohol marker collection so I am doing a base skin tone on my character, Kara, from my ongoing comic, 7-inch Kara, which you can check out at natosoup.com slash Kara hyphen comic. I'm just doing a base tone of um, OR822, which is one of the skin tones. And the color system is a little different from what I'm used to. And you guys can check out the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com for more information, including a color chart to help you, you know, learn more about these markers and get started with them if you're interested in them. And they are available both in sets and open stock. I've definitely seen them on Jerry's Artorama. And it was my art snacks for April that first tipped me off to the existence of these markers. So you might want to check out that vid video as well. And I'm not doing the sort of scrubbing motion we normally do when we're using alcohol markers. I'm just doing fine strokes and they seem to be blending together with no problem at all. So that's the first layer of Kara skin. And these seem to layer upon each other decently so far. I'm getting a nice contrast, enough contrast in color between the two layers. Um, and of course, you know, that can vary from marker to marker. So it is important if that's something you care about, it does extend how useful your collection is. Um, that is something that you're gonna have to test individually. And the type of paper you use can also affect that. I like working on thirsty papers. I like rendering on watercolor papers and card stocks and uncoated papers and uh, bristols. So I'm doing this in a 300 series Strathmore mixed media sketchbook. And that's what I use for all of my marker tests. Any marker tests you see on this channel will be done in a book, this book or one very similar. And I'm being pretty delicate with my marker. 
because I don't want to ruin the nib since I purchased these for personal uh, use, not just for review. But I'm sure if I wasn't being careful, I could very easily rip, uh, ruin these tips. So something I would like to see perhaps change in the future, if it's possible, I actually don't understand, I don't know how feasible this would be, is of um, a foam brush. I know the regular La Plumes, or at least I remember the regular La Plumes having them. I reviewed the La Plumes on my blog, uh, natasoup.blogspot.com, many years ago. And I haven't revisited them since. And then I gifted that set to another reviewer many, again, many years ago. So I no longer have access to that set. So I can't pull them out to tell you guys. But it would be nice to see a sturdier brush than um, fiber. Fiber tends to get beaten up and chewed up pretty quickly. And the exterior of the box definitely seems like it's aimed at crafters and stampers. All right, let's zoom in so you can check out how that worked. And that was OR822. Trying to get to focus. There we go, it took forever. Oh, lost it. There, perfect. And that's the brush, held up okay. Now I want to switch over to OR21. And let's see, it's a little bit difficult to find where, oh, I am so sorry about that, where the markers are because they just, in their case, they just sort of move around a lot. So it takes, even though I sorted these a while back, it takes a little bit of looking. I'm looking, there we go, OR21. Now one of the problems is with the lighter colors, there's a bit of translucency in the color chip they use. So um, they can be, it can be difficult to see how they actually layer on paper. Actually what I was gonna say is it can be difficult to find them inside the box because the chip, the color you're looking for doesn't always match the chip. Sometimes when I'm tired, like I am right now, words sort of substitute themselves and then they just come spilling out all wrong. I'm sure some of you guys can definitely identify with that. And I want to start with, start applying blush. So I want R813. There we go. And I like to do a lot of layers in my illustrations. So that's always something I'm gonna be testing for. All right, now for our first attempt at shading. And we're gonna try V574, if it ever focuses. And that way, if it's not quite right, we can go back in and add some brown on top of it. And it is a little hot for a violet. I was kind of hoping I would have some uh, better purples, better like blue violets, violets, etc., for shading skin, because that's really where I need the fine details. Now we need O oh, um, eight two five and that should help knock down how purple this looks. How violet, really. And there is a colorless blender included in the set. I do try to avoid those in general, just um, because they tend to push colors to the back instead of really blending them together. I find the best way to blend colors is to mix two similar shades or tones or hues together or go back and blend with a prior color used. All right, now I want a light blue and I think GB, uh, 690 is the way to go, and here we have it. 
This would definitely be a time to pull out the colorless blender, which is N006. And it's nice that this set actually comes with a colorless blender. That is something most sets make you order separately and sometimes they can be expensive or difficult to find. And these seem to respond well to their own colorless blender. Um, something I've noticed about other marker brands is that when you apply blender to them, they tend to like bleach out drastically. It has a, a, a large, difficult to control um, sort of radius of effect. And that doesn't seem to be the case with these, which is nice. Now I'm sure if you like pulled out your Copic blender, it would, because it's got such a large nib compared to this, it would definitely have a pretty big effect but um, they, that's probably also why they come with their own blender marker. So um, you can control how much blender goes down as you work. These markers are not refillable um, and you can't replace the nib, so you will have to replace them when they run out, which does make them being available open stock uh, very handy. And when I bought them, and this may change, have changed, and I'm gonna have to research this again for the blog post anyway, so you should check that for the most uh, recent price. But it was about $2 a marker or less, which isn't bad. Of course, when you buy it in a set, like I did, a set of 36 for about 50 something dollars, it's more like $1.50 per marker, which is really one of the lowest prices I've seen. All right, so my very, very light blue, the tip is starting to fray. It's hard to see. I can see it when I apply it to the paper, but I don't know that I could get the camera to pick it up because it's all so pale. Um, and I am still being very gentle with it. It is more, of course it is more difficult to cover larger areas with these. These are not designed to cover larger areas. Um, hence why I am trying to be very gentle with them. Okay, so let's get started with her freckles since the skin is dry and I want to use OR827. You can do, let me see if I can zoom in for you guys. You can do very fine dots with these. The selection of browns is a little bit limited. Um, there's really only three darker skin tones in this set, um, and they're all right, but I'd like to see a wider range. I'm sort of hoping that if these become popular, uh, Marvy may introduce more of their um, color range. I know they have 144 colors available in the La Plume regular size markers, so it would be nice to see um, more of those make it over to the La Plume fine brush size. Moving on to the next darker brown, which is E866. I do like to mix some darker freckles in. They're not really all one color. Now we finally get to see how these handle for um, doing like strokes or uh, hair shine. I'm going to go ahead and do a fill on the pigtails because I do want those to be darker since they're at the very back. And the brush, uh, at least before it starts getting kind of chewed up, handles hair all right. Um, this is where a rubber brush, which has more give and more elasticity to it, can really start to shine. And I'll let that dry for a little bit because if you really want the shine in hair to stand out, you need to give um, each layer time to dry in between applications. Now for the pink on her dress, I want to use R815 and I'm going to have my blender marker handy 
because it's supposed to look sort of um, faded out. At least it is in the illustration. Sorry, the reference photo. <laughs> kind of spacey tonight. Now, the pink doesn't handle quite as well as some of the other colors do. I'm noticing in terms of um, when you use the colorless blender on top of it. It's not bad, but it desaturates really quickly. So that is something you might want to keep in mind that might be useful for you or, um, you know, it may really bother you. So the fine brush on the Marvies were really good for the grass. Uh, I was able to get nice uh, sort of flicking motion, which is perfect for grass stems. Uh, my only concern is again, beating up that nib, the fiber nib. guys we're nearing the home stretch her hair has had plenty of time to dry so I'm going to use the darkest brown that comes in the set 859 to add some shadow and highlights to the pigtails and I'm going to go back over that with E at 866 which was the brown I applied just previously. And these seem to blend really well. Um, there isn't too much desaturation. I mean, really, so far, I'm pleased with how they handle. I am curious how they handle with Copic markers, so I'm gonna have to revisit them. But on their own, they're pretty good. And if you own a set of the Marvy La Plumes, the, the regular ones, then these are a great addition to that. I would like to see more colors in the family, but these are a fairly new product. And if you're say a stamper or a card maker or an artist who's just starting getting started, these are really not a bad way to get started good range of colors comes with its own blending marker so you don't have to order that separately colors blend really well together and um, even if you do end up getting other alcohol markers this set is still relevant because it's a fine point nice saturation of colors and there's also a good spread of pastels in there to help with blending some pros and cons the let's start with the cons because those are at the top of my head and we'll, we can end with the pros um number one the fiber tip is very prone to splitting fraying and becoming mushy so 
that doesn't really make me happy. Number two, the box doesn't have any dividers in the bottom, so your markers are gonna end up way out of order, which can make it difficult to find colors quickly when you're looking for them. Um, the third con is these are not necessarily that easy to find. I found mine on Jerry's Artorama. I recommend you check there, but regarding Jerry's, sometimes their brands change regularly, so you may not be able to find them again if you do invest in a set. Now we can talk about the pros. Um, first of all, I think the bodies are very stylish. Um, they look different from other alcohol markers currently on the market. They're not trying to look like any other alcohol marker on the market, which I really like because so many of these markers end up looking the same. The color chips on the top are fairly useful. They're not always 100% accurate, but they're close. Um, they include a color name and a color family. And the color name is also listed on the barcode on the, bo on the barrel, but it's not printed on the barrel. Um, another pro is that for now, they're fairly inexpensive um, if you can find them I really don't recommend paying I mean I saw them on Amazon individually for like ten dollars a marker which is just outrageous uh, that's why I always double check against several sources before I commit um, so do your research and find a best source for these and if better ones come up I'll be sure to list them and uh, while I was <laughs> while I was yammering on about pros I remembered another con there's only 36 colors currently available in this size but these are a fairly new product and the parent company Marvy has a Laplume marker out already which is a larger body it's more comparable to Copic um, and those are available in 144 colors so there is a chance that we will see more colors if these are popular um, another pro is that I like the size of these pins they're much smaller than other alcohol markers currently on the market which means that you know, you can start off with them and then as you buy other markers, you can still continue to use these. In the 36 color set, I thought the spread of colors was a good spread. It was a useful spread. Um, and it comes with its colorless blender included in the set. Now, some people would say, well, that means you only really get 35 colors, but I am constantly having to buy colorless blenders open stock to test to see how useful they are or I'm having to use my Copic colorless blender which frankly just wouldn't have cut it in this test because it would have been so big that it would have pushed the pigment out. These don't really bleed all that much. They're not particularly juicy markers and they're really not designed to cover large areas. But if you enjoy doing fine, intricate detail work or you use coloring books for relaxation or enjoyment, Marvy LaPlume fine brush markers might be the markers for you. I hope you guys enjoyed this, this field test slash review. For the rest of it, please check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. Um, if you enjoy content like this, make sure you, you favorite it. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel because I'm always making stuff, new content all the time for you guys. I'm a big believer in egalitarian art education, so I'm doing my part to help out regarding that. Um, if you really, really like content like this and you really want to help make it more widespread and more affordable for me, because I do take a bit of a loss at this, please check out my Patreon because helping fund this channel really goes a long way towards me making more content like this. And as always, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. That's what they're there for. Um, so I think that about covers it. I'm just adding some, some opaque white detail or, uh, sorry, some Signo, some gel pen white details right here, but we're really about done. So I'm Becca Hilburn from Natto Soup Studios. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you around. Bye.